Okay, thanks everybody. Uh, it's great to be here this morning. I want to share a few insights from research that I've been doing with colleagues at both Monash and RMIT universities over the last few years about both opportunities and challenges for building trust in the changing energy system. And many of these will be familiar to you because we've been discussing them over the last few days. So the first is about having a shared vision and plan for our energy future. And we've, we have heard this consistently. I think this has become through very strongly over the last few days. But I just want to add a bit of nuance to this and, and add that this is just so essential to consumer trust. When we go out and speak to people in their homes generally, is the kind of research we do, what they tell us is that they're confused, they don't understand this amorphous energy system, they don't differentiate between, between retailers, distributors, transmitters, regulators, or even the government, and they're not sure where the industry is heading. So when they get asked to participate in a demand management program or an opportunity in the energy system is presented to them, they're not sure why they're being asked to do it. When they're being asked to, for example, you know, shed load at a certain time of day in exchange for a board, it doesn't make sense to them why an energy company would be paying them to do that because they don't have a fundamental understanding of peak demand or how it's essential to balance that in a system that is predominantly uh, has renewable energy sources. So this vision is essential for consumers to kind of understand where the industry is headed. And I also want to emphasise there that it's not just about informing and educating consumers of the vision, but having a conversation with them, which they're already engaged in because they're already you know, installing battery and solar panels, as we all know, so they already have a vision. It's about having a conversation with them about that vision and some of the challenges that the sector faces in, in making that vision happen. And that is just, I think, the most important thing that we can do to build consumer trust. The second point is about partnerships with various sectors that are competing, if you like, with the messages that are coming from the energy sector at the moment. And, and the most clear example I can give you of that at the moment is the summer that we've just experienced. We have a health sector saying to consumers, you know, stay home, turn the air conditioning on, don't compromise your health. We have an emergency management system saying we have bushfires, we have smoke, stay inside, keep cool. We have an energy sector saying, you need to cut back your power supply at this particular time of day, or we want you to pre-cool your home, or we want you to do something different. We have an efficiency and climate change message saying, you know, please only use air conditioning when you really need it. And all these messages are conflicting with consumers and creating, again, this sense of confusion and distrust. And that requires from the sector collaboration with these other sectors that are facing similar challenges around issues of heat and issues of um, emergency kind of situations. Cameron talked earlier about some of the creative solutions around comfort uh, that are coming out of research that him and his colleagues have been doing. Partnerships, for example, with councils and uh, with other um, community agencies around creating cool spaces, creating alternatives for cooling, uh, creating cooling parks, creating splash parks in our, in, our, um, in our areas where they don't have access maybe to energy on certain times of day or uh, they can't afford energy. So there are some creative partnerships here that I think could combine different sector interests to also build trust as we move into this changing environment. Third, and really coming back to what Ron just told us about, we need to think outside the market. We can't only engage people in this relationship of them as being consumers or customers of a product that the energy sector delivers. Because so many challenges that the energy sector is facing and will face into the future aren't based on a market exchange. They're based on appealing to people around various other issues that the sector is facing as a community, as uh, a common resource that we all need to collectively manage to move towards our future. And they require different conceptualisations of energy, different relationships about how people relate to energy, similar to the water example that Ron was talking about where we can take some inspiration. So we also need to be thinking of these other ways of conceptualising energy and of people's relationship to it to engage them in different programs. And my final point that I want to leave you with is about the coming uh, future. And this relates to a new project we've just started with the Australian Research Council uh, and Energy Consumers Australia, Ausgrid and Ausnet, Ausnet Services, thinking about uh, how digital technologies, things like the internet, things like the internet of things, smart appliances, automation, uh, working from home, how all those things are going to start to combine with energy services and how the two are going to become increasingly intertwined as we heard in the previous session and also um, from Ben around the belong uh, piece that we heard this morning. 
So when these services start to entwine, trust and issues, issues of trust also start to combine together and we start to maybe not think of trust as something that is specific to specific industries, but actually something that is going to blend across, across industries. This is gonna create a challenge around issues of reliability, for example, because if you're working from home and your power goes out, that obviously will knock out your internet as well and create extra challenges around um, you know, doing what you wanna do at home. So reliability may also change and, and expectations of reliability in this kind of scenario. But at the same time, this scenario also is bringing in new opportunities for flexibility because we're seeing with, with technology increasingly flexible work practices. We're also seeing, as Cameron talked about earlier today, the desire to disconnect, the desire to create a blackout, not only of, you know, maybe not of energy service, but, but of digital services. So there's also some opportunities there to think about how reliability expectations might change in this environment as well in the future. And I'll leave it there. Thank you.